If you're in the Seattle area and want to ski or board, should you choose Crystal Mountain or Stevens Pass? Well, before we cover some of the factors that you may want to consider, let's get a sense of what it's like to ski or board both. So, Crystal or Stevens? One obvious way to decide is by the pass they accept. Stevens is epic, Crystal is icon. But maybe you're open to both because your long lost cousin has given you an epic buddy pass or icon friends and family discount. Then how long will it take to get there? Well, both are about the same distance from SeaTac Airport. But Crystal approaches twice the vertical drop and has more than twice the skiable acreage as Stevens. So you're getting twice the mountain for the same drive, particularly since each resort claims an identical breakdown of terrain difficulty. Whether you're a novice or expert, you're getting twice the terrain at Crystal. The downside for beginners is that each resort only has 11% easy slopes. You may not see much of the mountain if it's going to be your first time on skis or a board. Friends I've skied with found Stevens more challenging than Crystal. That may be because of that effect. Although Crystal has the same percentage beginner terrain, it's twice as large. There actually are twice as many green slopes. So Steven seems like it has less for beginners because it does. With both resorts having over 50% blue slopes, there's plenty for you to explore with your intermediate cousin. Yeah, the one who gave you the buddy pass. And obviously, the look and feel of the slope is going to be different at each resort. So it's not simply about amount of terrain. The expert terrain is where it gets fun, starting with the 7th Heaven Chairlift at Stevens. An old two-person fixed lift, followed by a short hike and slipping between some trees, and you've got steep, double black terrain that ultimately drops you back at the base. Or the Thai Mill Chairlift, another older three-person fixed lift that opens up single black terrain and a bowl with trees spaced enough apart that you can tackle them even if you're a little leery of tree skiing or the double diamond two-person chairlift, which opens up the backside, Mill Valley. You can ski your board along the South Divide, which is blue, or to your left, at any point, drop into some black slopes, all of which take you to the base of Mill Valley. Cell phone reception can be a bit spotty on this side, so be aware of that. And then there's Crystal, Chair 6, another older two-person fixed chairlift, which you can take to the summit, and like the South Divide at Stevens, ski your board along a ridge and drop at any point along the way into the double black Campbell Basin. A perfect option if there's fresh powder. Challenging even when there's no fresh snow, with bumps developing over time and just great steep terrain. And under the Rainier Gondola, more black and double black options. And even more advanced terrain on the right side of the trail map under the Northway Chairlift. So how are the views? Well, it may not be a fair comparison based on the footage here, because Stevens Pass had just received 80 inches, so everything looked majestic with feet of snow clinging to the trees. Meanwhile, Crystal had spring skiing conditions, snowless trees, but blue skies that provided clear views of the Cascades. Stevens and Crystal are only separated by 55 miles, so the views may be similar. But one thing that Crystal has over Stevens is a close-up view of Mount Rainier. That's tough to beat. Now for the not-so-fun topic of lift lines. Weekends are predictable at both resorts. Long lines, particularly in the morning. The lift isn't open yet. These people are lining up half an hour early to make sure they get up there as soon as possible. The chair lifts open at 9, but just like at Stevens, people at Crystal line up very early. It's 8.20, and take a look at the line. At Crystal, our experience was 15-minute waits at the Chinook Express and Rainier Express in the morning. The lines did tend to improve during the day, and Chair 6 was always less crowded, likely because the terrain is so difficult. And we found a similar story at Stevens, with long morning waits at the Hogsback Express and Skyline Express, but shorter waits at Cares Chair and 7th Heaven, and all of the waits improving throughout the day. Weekdays at both resorts? Much better, with almost no lines. 
How about the chairlifts themselves? Well, once again, there's similarity between the resorts. Both have a mix of detachable high-speed chairlifts and older fixed chairlifts, with the older lifts typically providing access to the more difficult terrain. But if you want to be covered on your way up the mountain, the advantage goes to Crystal with the Mount Rainier gondola, but you won't be covered when you wait in line for the gondola, which is outside. For the past few years, parking has been a struggle at both resorts, particularly on the weekends. Both have implemented measures to address the issues, ranging from reservation systems, weekend parking fees for non-pass holders, and carpool lots. So check what the current policy is. Our solution has always been to arrive early because, for example, pre-pandemic, all lots at Stevens were full one weekend at 8.30 a.m. At 8.15 on a Sunday, people are pouring in already. There's still space in B and C lots, but it's going fast. If you end up parking far away from the base, don't worry. Crystal has replaced this open-air shuttle with a bus. But historically, parking has been free at Stevens and mostly free at Crystal, which is always awesome. You just may have to get there early if you want a good spot. A comparison of food and base facilities is in flux. No current changes at Stevens. It has multiple lodges at the base with lockers, rentals, and plenty of options for food. All of it pretty standard for what you'd expect at a ski resort in terms of price and quality. Nothing particularly impressive other than the size of this burrito, which was larger than my head and could not be finished, at least without some sort of unwelcome reappearance of the food on the slopes in the afternoon. The change is all at crystal. Currently, smaller base facilities with similarly standard food, if you overlook the collection of food trailers and containers that do provide some unique options, all of that will either be supplemented or replaced as Crystal undergoes a $100 million improvement project, including more parking and construction of new facilities, with the Mountain Commons Lodge scheduled to be the first new structure to open this year. This may provide an opportunity for Crystal to leapfrog Stevens by having a larger, more modern base. But when we move beyond the base, Crystal beats Stevens. Crystal has lunch options on the mountain. You can enjoy mountain views as you eat your lunch. All right, let's talk about potential accommodations at Stevens and Crystal. Crystal does have some slopes at accommodations, but not many, and there's no real town to speak of. If you want to order takeout from a restaurant, there's not a lot around there. To get more options, you can stay at Enumclaw, which is about a 50-minute drive from Crystal. There are fast food joints, grocery stores. You can find everything you need in a regular town. We didn't actually stay at either. Not Enumclaw, not the slopeside accommodations. We got an Airbnb, which is just about a 20-minute drive from Crystal. Very cool, just like home. There's plenty of these around the area. So if you don't want to be as far away as Enumclaw, but you also don't want to be right up on the slopes, there are plenty of Airbnbs that you can find. For Stevens, a really cool option is a town called called Leavenworth, which unfortunately is a 40 minute drive past Stevens from Seattle. So if you're coming from Seattle and you want to stay at Leavenworth, you have to drive a little bit more. But it's such a cool town. A Bavarian style town that doesn't even have a Bavarian history. They just designed it that way. We're staying in the heart of Leavenworth and directly across the street from us is this hill with tons of trees lit up and everybody's coming with sleds and going down. Adults, kids, Leavenworth likes to hold events to attract people so there was also some sort of light show going on. This is like a, really the center of all the action. It's currently the winter festival so the activity is even more heightened. If you do come to Leavenworth and you don't want to just crash like we're doing so we can get up early and go skiing, there are plenty of beer gardens, breweries, restaurants and bars, and all sorts of things for you to enjoy at night. We kind of feel like we're in the Alps. And if that's something that you think is cool any time of year, you should definitely make a trip out here from Seattle.